excellent Kentucky Derby winner, undefeated in four starts. But he wasn't the only horse who ran very well on, in the Kentucky Derby. He was the best of the best. Good magic. Uh, folks, uh, Vino Rosso uh, was listed as my top pick. Uh, I did was, was able to tell uh, a lot of my friends and the people there that I, I was switching to Good Magic, who had been my second choice. Uh, because of the wet track, I figured that would suit Good Magic more. Uh, good Magic ran a very good race, but by no means was he ever going to be justified that. Yeah, clearly. And and Good Magic is a horse that I have liked uh, uh, since his two-year-old season. I, I think his performance in the Derby backs up what he did in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile uh, quite nicely. He was game down the stretch. He was close to that uh, blistering pace and continued on. Um, was not a tired horse uh, hitting the wire. He just ran in to justify. He was much the best as the second place horse in there. Credit to Chad Brown and the Good Magic team. I don't think we'll see him back in the in the Preakness. Um, it's not Chad Brown's way to come back that quickly, but. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. We will, and Good Magic certainly would be a uh, heavy, heavy second choice if, as it looks now, if he decides to run in the Preakness. Now, the, the, so there's two things going in the favor of seeing Good Magic in the Preakness. Matt, number one is uh, really a clear second choice. So uh, a big Derby performance. Why not take one more shot at Justify? Uh, in, in Baltimore. The other one is Chad Brown is the defending Preakness champion, having won it last year with cloud computing. I'm with you, though. I think it's more unlikely that he makes it to the Preakness. But uh, Good Magic uh, did did chase that fast early pace. He was between horses, which I don't like to see in such a grueling race. Uh, he was even shuffled slightly back on the turn, and then he had to make a pretty sharp move when justified move. Second best, I agree with you. I don't know if I'd say much the best for second, but a very good performance for Good Magic. Audible was on the list of seven horses that I thought could win the Derby, but quite honestly, Matt, he was number seventh on my list. I know you liked him more than I did, and I thought that was a big performance. He had a little bit of traffic, and then he certainly kept running up the rail in the Kentucky Derby and very close to catching Good Magic for second. Yeah, uh, I, I was uh, pleased with the performance of Audible. Uh, in the early going, he was back as far as 12th. Um, not that far behind at any point, no more than uh, seven lengths behind, and and uh, got a pretty decent trip. Didn't get bumped and, rough, and roughed up very much, but coming around the turn into the stretch, he, uh, uh, Javier Castellano had to find some running room and dove to the rail. And he continued on from there. Uh, um, like you said, Brian, um, just missing the uh, the second place finish uh, uh, behind Good Magic. That's right. And Matt, uh, instilled regard. Uh, instilled regard ran a big race. His odds were way too high. I had him 30 to 1 in my fair odds. And I ended up using him underneath in the exotics just because of how extremely high he was. He ran a good, good race, too. He... Uh, he encountered uh, some trouble early in the race, uh, then found uh, very uh, opportune uh, openings uh, down the stretch and rallied nicely. Again, he was gaining on uh, good magic uh, late uh, for fourth. Other horses who ran well, Matt, I think we got to mention my boy Jack, who again ran a long, long way, also was uh, pushed pretty, pretty far back early, rallied for fifth. Bravazo hung in there, was making some... Uh, Decent ground up uh, on the turn and into the stretch. And another one I want to mention is Hawkberg because I thought he had one of the worst trips in the field as well. And he was really running, albeit for seventh. Yeah, and these uh, those horses that you mentioned in fourth and fifth and sixth and seventh places are all horses that took advantage of that very fast pace and made some very nice moves uh, uh, around the turn into the stretch. My boy Jack was... Ninth in 19th place, almost 20 lengths behind at some point, uh, in still regard. Um, actually, between calls on the chart, was actually in last place, uh, uh early on, uh, 13 behind. They all made good moves, they're all horses, uh, that impressed me with that. And I and I look forward to, to seeing them race in the future, absolutely, Matt. And and real quick, let's run down the list of good performances there. Audible third. 
the New York bred for Todd Pletcher uh, appears to be pointed for the Belmont as his next race. That's kind of Pletcher's MO to skip the Preakness with a Derby, uh, a Derby loser and go to the uh, Belmont. Audible will be one horse if we, in, in fact, we do see uh, justify two thirds of the way to the Triple Crown. Uh, Audible will be one of the big names waiting there at New York form in the Belmont. Instilled regard, looks like he's going to get some time off for trainer Jerry Hollendorf or look for a summer campaign, uh, much like his good runner from last year's Derby Battle of Midway did, who ultimately won the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. My boy Jack also uh, had a pretty strong campaign already this year, so uh, DeSormo, uh, DeSormo looks like he's going to give him some time off. Bravazo. Again, the M.O. of Mr. D. Wayne Lucas. He's going to bounce right back to the Preakness. And then Hoffberg, another horse, one of the one of several, I think, dangerous horses for the Belmont. Bill Mott saw a good performance in the Derby. Hoffberg will be looking uh, to get a few weeks off before uh, gearing up for the Belmont Stakes. Lone Sailor ran a good race. Uh, also, a little bit of traffic, finished eighth. Uh, he is a possibility although I'm not sure how likely also for the Preakness. Yeah. And uh, like we said before, Brian, these are all, uh, these are all promising horses. Um, why don't we also mention some of the horses that we think had the worst trips uh, uh, in the race. And, and a couple of them are, are big names, the big names like Mendelssohn and, and Magna moon um, Mendelssohn and Magna moon. Uh, to begin with, out of the gate, we're bumping into each other a good bit. I think Magna Moon maybe uh, instigated some of that. But uh, as they continued along, they both, you know, got their feet under them. But every time they seemed to get uh, get into stride, they, they again ran into some bumping problems and traffic tr- trouble. And, and uh, eventually both of them succumbed to... Uh, 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 just just horrible trips. I know Aiden O'Brien said Mendelssohn, uh, aside from the bad trip, was really overwhelmed by the whole situation, all of the rain and the crowd, and and we saw running into things that Mendelssohn is a spirited horse, um, a vocal horse, and and it was just a bit too much for him. Magnum Moon, uh, um, uh, just absolutely a horrible trip, and, and he's going to get some time off. Uh, uh, between starts, um, I thought we talked about my boy Jack. Also, I thought he had one of the most difficult trips. Also, getting bumped and steadied at least twice, and then uh, swinging out eight wide in the turns. So, more kudos to him for uh, the way he dealt with a bad trip. And and Vino Rosso, um, a horse you and I liked. Um, he just ate a ton of dirt and a ton of mud. And came out of that race uh, uh, with a very wide trip, and and was just his eyes were just loaded with dirt and mud. Um, it was a tough trip for him. I think we'll probably see Vino Rosso in the Belmont Stakes. I still think he's a horse that can do good things. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. And uh, and yeah, my boy Jack. Let me emphasize that as well. My boy Jack did run a very good Kentucky Derby, and uh, it ran farther, I think, than probably anybody in the race after uh, some trouble early. Now, the fast pace and, and the fact that he was way back early probably not a bad thing for him. But uh, just the distance run, uh, my boy Jack had things against him in here. Uh, so for him to be really running down the stretch in fifth, and check out Hoffberg's trip again too, because they were both running well late. Uh, Vino Rosso, yeah, I think he is a Belmont horse. Vino Rosso, I, I, he's a horse who does tend to spin his wheels a little bit and uh, uh, needs to level off to really make up ground late, and it just wasn't going to happen on this track for him. Pletcher said he's never had a horse where he had, had to clean out the eyes not only after the race, into the evening, but then the next morning as well. So obviously it wasn't uh, the most comfortable of trips for him. Look for him to be uh, a threat, mile and a half at Belmont. He'll be in the Belmont with Audible from the Pletcher Barn, at least those two. And uh, mile and a half at Belmont should be up his alley. Bolt Doro really uh, pushed that pace and found himself in good position, but uh, just didn't have it. I don't know if he, if the distance was the question or the surface was the question, but he came up empty after moving into second on the far turn. Magna Moon and Mendelssohn, yeah, obviously they're, better horses than the worst two horses in this Kentucky Derby where they finished 19th and 20th, but uh, just wasn't their day. 
horses are, are are like humans. We all have bad days and uh, bad trip, bad track, bad day for those two for sure. All right, Matt, that's our rundown of the Kentucky Derby. Justified, 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 deserving the star of the show. There were other good performances, but justified moves forward as a real threat for a triple crown.